You're small. Group watches from undergrowth. The zombies descend on several helpless prisoners, ripping into them with teeth and claws. Oh my god. On the other side of the clearing, black stock and his guards watch the drones, ripping chunks of bloody flesh from their screaming victims. A comfort for him. Thanks. Brave sacrifice. The tower lives on in safety and prosperity. Bile rises in your throat, but you force yourself to watch as the prisoners are devoured, memorizing each other's faces. I swear, we'll find a way to make Blackstock pay for this. Bushes rustle beside you, and you turn in time to see Nina stand up, eyes wild as she grips her axe with both hands. I can't do this. I can't just let them all die. No. Dirk lunges for Nina. But she's already bursting through the bushes at the edge of the clearing into the glare of the headlights. Die, you! Nina barely makes it two steps where a line of bloody holes rips open her along her torso. And her lifeless body falls to the ground. There's more in the bushes. Shoot them! The small line on top of the truck swivels, painting your group right against the dark woods. Oh no! Hey, get down! Patricia tackles you onto the forest floor as bullets tear through the bushes, shredding leaves and shattering branches in the sawdust. Son of a... Cassie draws her pistol and returns fire. You hear yells of surprise and pain, then a sharp crash as her bullets shatter the spotlight. Go, go, go! The group plows through the bushes and over tree roots in an effort to get away. Behind you, the gunfire abruptly stops, replaced a moment later by wailing sounds from the guard's radio. That sound again. They're using it to attract the drones. Sure enough, as your night vision returns, you're able to pick out a handful of twisted, almost human shapes moving among the trees. It will draw drones barrel out of the undergrowth surrounding your group. One lurches directly in your path, slamming you against a tree. Desperately, you try to fight back, but only tightens its hold as it leans in, saliva dripping as its jaws rip, stretch unnaturally wide. Faith! Patricia ducks the fighting that's erupted around you and lunges in your direction, machete drawn. When an arrow suddenly thuds in the drone's eye socket, splattering its black blood across her face. You shove the limb zombie away in time to see a man emerge from the trees with barely a sound. And he's using arrows. Nice. I like you. Green arrow. Whoa. The man lo looses another arrow, which whips past you to take down a zombie that's closing in on Dirk. What the? More drones trickle in, the man fires again and again, drawing and firing with fluid precision until the woods are half still, and a half dozen drones lie in heaps on the ground. Wow, thank you, that was... The man turns to you as he knocks another arrow, this time aiming it directly at your heart. Leave. But the next one's for you. Wake the dead. Chapter 2. On the run. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. You stare down the arrowhead at the cold face of the man who just single-handedly took down every zombie in the clearing. Hang on, can't we talk about this before you shoot me? Nothing to talk about. This is my land and you've got no right to be on it. We're sorry. We weren't trying to cause you any trouble, sir. Maybe not, but you led the trouble right to my doorstep. It's not like we wanted them to chase us. Hey, this is a great conversation, but more drones are going to show up any minute. Then you'd better get moving. Patricia snaps forward, clutching her coat tightly around her. Look, we've been through hell tonight. We're exhausted. If you have a safe place nearby... Hold up, Patricia. We don't even know this hayhole. You just came out of nowhere. Who's to say he's not working for Blackstock? Because you'd have arrows in you. You turn to face the mystery man with clasped hands. My sister's right. Please, there must be something you can do. The man looks up over your group, hesitating for a moment, then shakes his head. I can't take the risk. Please, just go. 
Fine, come on, everyone. We. Patricia suddenly stumbles, throwing up one hand to catch herself against a tree as she clutches her side. Patricia, what's wrong? Nothing. She's been bit. Shannon rushes to her side, ignoring her protest, peels her hand away from her stomach to reveal a shirt soaked through with blood. Oh, more of that. She's been shot, looks like multiple times. Patricia, why the hell didn't you say anything? I had to save everyone, couldn't let... She gasps, her legs suddenly giving out. You dart forward and barely catch her before she hits the ground. Just hold on, okay? We'll... You trail off as a man slings his bow across his back, moving to support her other side. What are you doing? Something stupid, probably. Without another word, he steers you deeper into the woods, the rest of your group following close behind. The man leads you to a small cabin in the middle of clearing. Inside, he steers you into one of the bedrooms and helps you lay Patricia down on the bed. Shannon crouches by Patricia's side and gently lifts her shirt, revealing several ragged punctures that ooze dark blood. Oh, God. That's fine. I'll be fine. Don't talk, Patricia. Just try to keep still. Wordlessly, the stranger passes a bundle of gauze to Shannon. She lays it over the wounds and presses it down quickly, staining the white material red. How'd she get shot? We're running away from the tower. Some of the guards fired us when we saw them feeding people to zombies. They killed one of our friends. You go quiet for a while, trying to shake the memory of Nina's final moments from your mind. I'm Faith, by the way. That's my sister, Patricia. Eli. Eli. Thank you for this. We'd all be dead if you hadn't come along. Don't mention it. Patricia's breathing grows ragged, sweat glistening on her face as she clenches her jaw hard against the pain. Shannon looks up abruptly from her place at Patricia's side, her manner suddenly businesslike. I need to clean these wounds and assess the eternal damage. What medical supplies do you have? Basic suture kit, gloves, gauze, one or two doses of morphine, maybe. Bring me everything you have. The rest of you, I need you to either help me or get out of the way, understood? Just tell me what to do. I'll do anything now, Patricia. Faith? I... Stick around, help treat Patricia. Really? No, I'm gonna walk out on my own sister. I'm ready. Whatever you need. Shannon nods rightfully. Eli retrieves a small zippered bag from the dresser and hands it over. Shannon opens the bag, scanning the contents. Okay, Eli, I need tweezers, sharp knife, mac. Find some clean sheets and tear them into smaller pieces for bandages. Dirk, get some water boiling to sterilize everything. On it. Understood. The three of them leave the room, and Shannon starts laying out the first aid supplies. Cassidy, I need warm water and soap. Some alcohol would be ideal, but I doubt. Shannon pauses as Cassidy holds out a flat metal flask. Rain alcohol work? Oh, yeah, thank you. What can I do? Prep a syringe of morphine. Everything that's left in this, in this bottle. Cassidy leaves the room, returning shortly with water and soap. Shannon washes her hands early as you carefully fill a syringe. Here. Patricia flinches, letting out a pained moan as Shannon injects the morphine. Oh, Faith. I'm here. I need you to be strong. You're my badass big sister. I know you can get through this. Patricia nods weakly, eyes fluttering as she slips into unconsciousness. Eli comes to uh, in a few minutes later with the sterilized tools and bandages. Need anything else? Faith can assist me for now, if everyone else could wait outside. Eli nods, and he and Cassidy leave to join the others in the main room. You hold a flashlight as Shannon carefully cleans the wounds on Patricia's abdomen, and then prepares the suture kit. Where did you learn all this? From books, mostly. The facility had a pretty extensive library. There wasn't much else to do when I was growing up, so... Hang on, you grow up in this place where your parents scientists do? I don't know, actually. One of the researchers found me in an abandoned house when I was very small. Working at the outpost, studying the zombie parasite. It's pretty much all I've ever known. So, what happened at the lab before we found you? All we knew was the comms went dead. She goes quiet for a moment, taking her time as she carefully knots a suture. There was an accident. One of the scientists got bit while collecting samples, and he hid it from the rest of us. No... By the time we found out, he was already infectious. The rest of the team was exposed in a matter of hours. But not you? No. As soon as I realized what was happening, I locked myself in one of the labs with a box of emergency rations. 
Then I just stay there watching my former colleagues try to break through the reinforced glass to kill me. Oh, Shannon. If you all hadn't shown up, I'd have died there. Why didn't you fight back? I'm not much of a fighter. Even when your life is on the line? She holds out her slender arms, wriggling them for emphasis. Would you bet your life on these? I can barely do a push-up. That's all the wounds on the side. Help me roll her over. As gently as you can, you roll the unconscious Patricia on her side. Shannon suddenly freezes, staring at Patricia's back. What? Is something wrong? Four injury wounds. There were only three exit wounds on the other side. Wait, so one of the bullets is still inside? We have to get it out. Not necessarily. The bullet could cause damage down the line, but trying to take it out could do more harm than good. Shannon takes a flashlight from you and peers into the wound. Seconds tick by and the light starts trembling in her hand. Shannon? I don't know what to do. I'm not a surgeon, Faith. If I try to take the bullet out, I might do even more damage. But... But... What if the bullet is pressing against an organ? What if it causes internal bleeding or lead poisoning? I can't. I don't know. Shannon... You can do this. I know you can figure this out. Faith, deciding whether to remove a bullet is complicated, even for real doctors. Well, that's why there's typically CT scans and MRIs and X-rays and things like that, you know? Who am I to make a call like this? Well, I'll actually take out the MRI machine because metal, but moving on. You reach out to give Shannon's shoulder a gentle squeeze. You're the best person to make this call. You're Patricia's best hope. Breathe. You've got this. She nods, closing her eyes and taking a deep breath. Yes. Yes, I can do this. Hold this. Her, she hands you the flashlight and washes her hands again, and you watch as she makes a careful incision. I see it. And you see it too. A glint of metal among the gore. Shannon picks up a sterilized tweezers. Hold her still. I've got her. Both hold your breath as she reaches into the wound a second passes, and then two, then five. Almost. Slow and smooth, Shannon pulls back her hand, bullet grasped firmly between the tweezers. Wow. I... I did it. Perhaps some more sutures. Yes, ma'am. A short while later, the last wound has been cleaned and stitched, and you settle Patricia on her back, and Shannon slouches in her chair, exhausted. It's the best I can do. She should be stable. For now. There are some bandages left over from the patch Mac made. I imagine you might need this, them at some point. Clean bandages. Can never have enough. You acquired bandage. I'm sure I will. You return to your seat by Patricia's side, clasping her hand in yours. You help Shannon patch up Patricia's injuries. Shannon, I just wanted to say I appreciate everything you've done. If you hadn't stepped up, Patricia might have... I'll do whatever I can to help your sister, Faith, I promise. Later the night, as you doze by Patricia's bedside, your sister starts to stir. She tries to sit up, and you quickly move to help her. More like should stop her, but... Faith. Hey, I'm right here. We're safe. Patricia nods, settling back with a pain sigh. I guess that means I owe you an explanation, huh? Damn right. You can start by what the hell happened in that clearing. Blackstock's been training the drones to look for food and... The sector instead of coming near the town. He's using his own people as bait? I'm sure he justified a sacrificing the few to save the many. But since he picks the sacrifices, it's no surprise that anyone on his bad side doesn't last long. How did you even find out about all this? Mac, he's been working as an assistant in Blackstock's office for the last few years. He's heard some troubling things, noticed some inconsistencies in the computer logs. The more we dug, the worse it got. I've never actually seen it before, but I knew what was going on. How long have you known? Patricia stares at her hands. Patricia, how long? Six months. Six months? Why didn't you stop him? Just, what do you think I could have done? You saw what happens to people who go against Blackstock. 
I don't know, you could have spread the word. If they knew the truth, the tower would rise up against him. You give people too much credit, Faith. Eh, it's true. You don't remember how bad it was before, in those first few months after the outbreak. You can't possibly justify. Yes, it can. Faith, I had to watch Dad turn. Little by little, Papa wouldn't leave. He kept saying Dad was in there somewhere. So we stayed. We stayed until the day Dad tore him apart. He swallows hard, her eyes glassy. I carried you out of the burning ruins of our town. Drones chased us for days. We had no food, no shelter. You didn't even have shoes. Eventually, another survivor group found us hiding in a wrecked car on the highway. They brought us to the tower, and the nightmare was over. So what changed that the tower was so amazing? Why'd we have to leave? Patricia looks up, her face tight with pain, and then it hits you. Yeah, basically when you mouth off to the guard. Yeah. The guard who broke into our room. They put my name on the list. That's what Matt came to tell me earlier. He's been keeping an eye on it for me, so when your name suddenly popped up. But why me? I've never even met Black Sock. How can I even be on his bad side? My guess is the guard reported you for asking about why zombies never attack the tower. That's all? But suddenly there's a loud knock at the front door and you glance. Uh, exchange a glance with Patricia. We'll finish this later. Faith. Before she can continue, you pull open the bedroom door and hurry out into the main room. Reach the living area to see Eli peering through a hatch in the door, speaking to someone outside. Supposed to believe you just happened to find us here? Seems awfully convenient. Buddy, there's nothing convenient about being out in these zombie-infested woods with no damn weapons. I know that voice. Jumping past a confused Eli, you rip open the door to reveal... Troy? Faith, you're okay. Troy's clothes are dirty, disheveled, his stylish hair tangled with leaves. You pull him into a tight hug as Eli reaches past. Shut the door. I'm glad you're okay, too, but what the hell are you doing here? <laughs> Trying not to get disappeared by Black Sox goon squad, same as you. Except for the part where you're an actual criminal, then you get away from the guards. Firstly, we're all criminals now, according to Blackstock. Secondly, I was gone long before the guards kicked my door down. Wait, you knew they were coming? But how? I'm on our guard channels on my, let's just say, borrowed radio. Useful for knowing when a surprise inspection is coming your way. Or a kidnapping. He looks away, a guilty expression suddenly crossing his face. Look, consider my chosen line of work. I wasn't exactly surprised to hear someone was coming to arrest me. It didn't occur to me something bigger was going on. I was already miles away when I heard your name pop up in the guard chatter. They said you ran into the sector, so I did too. I can't believe you ran into the zombie-infested woods by yourself. You never even finished combat training. Believe me, playing hide-and-seek with hungry drones is my idea of good times, but between certain death in the tower and only probable death in the woods... He shrugs helplessly. This is a guy who only thinks of himself, and just weirdly enough, he just appears on your door. It's sus. And no offense, but it wasn't hard to find you here. This close to the tower, it's just a matter of time before Blackwood does too. The cabin's defensible. We've got food and supplies. Ah, not for everyone, long term. What are you getting at, Troy? When you're the guy selling illicit goods right under Blackstock's nose, it pays to have an escape plan. I spent a lot of time plotting what I'd do if I uh, had to ditch the tower. Step one is going to Red Meadows. I'm sorry, did you say Red Meadows? Then do your homework, or Dad will send you to Red Meadows. What's Red Meadows? An old ski lodge or waves down the mountain. Perfect place to set up your own cozy little colony. Ah, except it's crawling with zombies, man. There's a reason kids call it Dead Meadows. Blackstock sent at least four teams to try and take that place. They never come back. Which means he'd never think to check there. Just take a look at this map and tell me it's not perfect. Wait a second. We have a map? 
You jerk up at some snarl echoes from outside. Eli rushes to peer through the boarded up window. There's a couple sniffing around the house. Won't be long until more are on the way. Damn, they followed us? More likely they followed him. Or maybe they can hear the way or sound of your bitching all the way. Hey! Yep, make sure to jump and yell. You jump, whirling around to see a haggard Patricia leaning on the bedroom doorway. She glares at everyone, eyes hot with anger. We can sort this bullshit out later. Right now we need to team up or die. So get it together. Dirk and Troy look at each other, a little bit bashed. Shannon hurries over to check Patricia's bandages. You give her a rueful smile. Not one of your best speeches. My guts are falling out of my body, Faith. Give me a break. Patricia, you need to be more careful. If you move around too much, you're gonna reopen your wounds. Maybe cause some internal damage. Before Patricia can respond, a wet, guttural shriek tears through the quiet night, making everyone flinch. Everyone cover a window. Bait, Cassidy, we're going out to try and thin the herd. There's only two of them. What herd? Everyone moves to take their position. Eli puts a, pulls a small black case from a drawer and tosses it to you. Those should help you see in the dark. E night vision goggles. You found your first piece of our equipment. Armor and weapons will give you an edge against your enemies, both alive and undead. Equip three or more pieces from the same armor set to unlock special battle scenes. Basically, we in the MMORPG community call them set bonuses. Got it. Eli grabs a lantern, and you and Cassidy follow him through the front door. Why are you using a lantern if we have night vision? Your goggles illuminate the forest with an eerie green glow. The cleared area on the cabin is still, but growls and screeches echo in the trees getting closer. Are we still trying to be quiet? They already know we're here. Better to take out as many as we can now before we're surrounded. So, would now be a good time for grenades? Cassidy shoots you an evil grin. You read my mind. Oh! Fire in the hole! Grabbing your own grenade, you hook your finger through the pin, focusing on the sounds of the approaching zombies, crashing through the thick of the undergrowth ahead. Wait for it. The first wave of drones crashes into view with an explosion of leaves and claws. Dead eyes flickering orange in the lamplight. Now. You're about the pin, hurl the grenade towards the onrushing horde. A moment later, it detonates with an air shattering bang. Yay! We killed maybe two zombies now. The explosion rips to the zombies, and a wave of shrapnel bursting through the rotted flesh and fountains of gore and pulverized bone. Ah, oh, three kills. A couple zombies collapse in the bloody pile. Several others reduced to limping or dragging themselves along on shredded limbs. Boom. Cassidy unhooks two grenades from a belt and whips them into the trees, grinning as the explosion draws more howls and cries from approaching drones. Sweet music. She draws her pistol and you let up your crossbow. Eli draws his bow, staying perfectly still until a handful of drones come into view. Eli's first arrow has already hit the first round before he has another one knocked and ready. More coming. The guy's like green arrow of the woods. Cassidy fires at a drone charging in from the left as more charge straight towards you. Some choice options will only appear if you have a certain item equipped. Throw the lamp like an idiot. Wow. Got you now. Careful. Aim. You fire a bolt that hits the drone right in the center of his forehead. We're up to four. Gotcha. Yeah, that's right. I'm keeping track. Whoa, nice shot. Eli lets out a curse, jerking his head back towards the cabin. Better fall back, they're coming faster now. One glance into the woods confirms his words. Through your goggles, you can see dozens of zombies coming your way, their eyes shining unnaturally in the dark. I'm going to think of a plan B. Pull off your goggles as the three of you pile back into the cabin. Eli has barely bolted the door behind you when something slams into it, causing the wood to creak and splinter. Oh, good. You saved some for us. How many out there? Too many. Eli, tell me there's another way out of here? Root cellar. There's a short tunnel that comes up past the tree line. You can collapse it behind you. 
He gestures at a trap door in the corner of the room. Outside bodies continue to slam against the front door and clawed fingers scratch at the boarded up windows. Come on, Patricia. I'm sure they're, uh, he's really happy to have taken us in. He's like, this was a really nice place till you all showed up. Patricia gumbles, but let Shannon help her up. They're halfway to a trap door when a window beside them shatters an explosion of glass and wood. Ah! The drone drags its upper body through the shards of broken window, dark blood oozing from the dozen of gruesome wounds, and grabs hold of Shannon's half ponytail. Shannon! You rush over to her, scanning the area for any object you can use as a weapon. A gardening fork. You snatch the sharp tool from the hook on the wall, you stab it down through the top of the drone's head. The skull cracks and splits across the around the thick pines, and dead eyes rolling back as foul black gore oozes from the sockets. Five. Oh goodness, thank you. Quick thinking. Oh, they're breaking through! With a final groan and a splintering crash, the door smashes open and a tangle of snarling drones surges inside. Get to the exit. We'll hold them. Shannon yelps as another drone forces its way through the open window, blocking its way to the trap door. <sighs> Patricia, Shannon, get behind me. Snatch a crossbow bolt from the quiver. The drone is already nearly on top of you. You literally, you know, stab it. You literally had a fork in your hand, right? The one the gardening forks, and you couldn't use that? Like, where did it go? Grabbing the bolt in your fist, you slam the plane against the drone's forehead. The sharp tip easily stabs through the rancid bone, and the drone wobbles for a moment before collapsing in a tangled heap. Fix. Oh. You glance back to see Troy clutching a fireplace poker with a, a little self-consciously. Uh, you look like you needed help for a second. Don't worry, there's plenty more where that came from. The group backs into a loose circle. Shannon and Patricia huddle in the center as everyone else desperately hold, works to hold the back of the horn. Give me a goddamn weapon. You're in no shape to fight. We'll cover for you. Just wait for an opening. But as more and more drones pour in through the doors and windows, it takes everything you have just to hold your ground. Yeah, about that. We need to slow them down. If someone could just block the door. Uh, kinda got my hands full here. Struggling to hold back your own zombie, you glance helplessly at the broken door. Then you see Patricia sidling along the wall towards it. Patricia, what are you doing? Making an opening. Face tight with feverish determination, Patricia plants her hand against a tall wooden cabinet and pushes hard. <laughs> Old wooden joints creak cabinet tips and topples. The cabinet crashes down on the floor, blocking half the door frame. Bones crunch beneath its weight, and one zombie's head splatters like a rotten watermelon. Damn it, come on. We're not getting another chance. Zerk finishes off his zombie, rushing to support the wavering Patricia. He helps her limp over to the trap door, Cassidy joining a second later to help them through. We're out, come on! Working together, you manage to take out most of the drones still in the cabin. Mac and Troy break off, disappearing through the trap door. You move to follow, but stop short when you see Eli still firing arrows at the zombies in the doorway. Their corpse is forming a makeshift barricade as he kills one after another. Eli, let's go. I can't. There's too many. We won't last much longer. I said I can't. I grew up in this place. I. Eli trails off, his eyes locked on a few pieces of paper. Pinned to the wall above the fireplace. Squinting, you can make out the words for Eli written on one of the pages. If I leave off, nothing left of them. Drive back into the fray to retrieve a keepsake for Eli and help him say goodbye to his cabin. While also adding it to your kill list. Go back to the papers. Sit down, zombie. Stop it. I'm trying to read this. Gritting your teeth, you push past Eli and make for the fireplace. Faith, no, what are you doing? He flinches as a drone and hurls itself in through the window ahead, blocking it out of the papers. You're in my way. Kill it with the clock. Fuck no. Fire will take you on. The clock feels like a brick in your hand as you rip it off the wall. Oh yeah, this will do. Raising clock high above your head, you bring it crashing down on the drone's head. Skull craters, craters aim with a 
wet and crunch. You lift the clock and bring it down again, and then a third time for good measure. Finally, the drone slumps bonelessly to the floor, the top of it, set and ten. A troubled mess of bones and shards and mush. I did warn you, Seven. Clear your path clear, you reach over the fireplace and snap the papers off the wall. You don't know what these are, but they're important to Eli. Victorious, you hurry back across the room, holding over the dining table to avoid another drone. You finally make it back to Eli, waving the papers in the air. We're out of time, we have to go now. He looks from you to the papers in the hand, to the pile of zombies stopping by the door. I... Eli, keep their memories alive. I don't know who you lost, but I can tell they were important. If you die here, there'll be no one to remember them. Look of profound pain crosses Eli's face as he lowers his bow brow or bow, staring at the door. The drones are already shoving their lifeless companions aside, forcing their way into the cabin. Eli, let's go. Eli takes the papers from your hand until you finally drop through the trap door. He pulls the trap door shut behind you, throwing a bolt to uh, keep it closed. Above, you hear the angry snarls and pounding of feet as zombies swarm into the cabin. Should take a while to get through there, but it won't hold forever. Down a set of rickety wooden stairs, you find Patricia sitting hunched against the wall, lurking Shannon beside her. The others are already down the tunnel, but she wouldn't go. Not without faith. Now, the gang's all here now, and we really ought to make our dramatic exit. Yes, please, Faith, help me get her up. Shannon offers her arm, but Patricia shakes her head, pushing it away. Instead, she painfully shrugs out of her pack, nudging it towards Eli. Make it. It shouldn't go to waste. What are you talking about? Patricia gives Dirk a significant look without a word. He scoops up her pack and ushers the others a few feet down the tunnel. Faith, come here. He moved to kneel beside her. Glancing nervously at the creaking floorboards above, Patricia pulls you closer and rests her forehead against you. Her skin is clammy, and she seems to struggle for every breath. You have to go, Faith. What? No, no, Patricia, I'm not leaving you. We'll take them out. All together. Don't be stupid. Even if we made it out of this, I wouldn't last more than a couple days. She straightens a little, showing you the fresh red stains looming around her. Across her bandage abdomen, angry, hopeless tears burn in your eyes. But Shannon said she fixed you up. That was all for nothing? No, not for nothing. Because of her, I can help you escape, and I can say goodbye. Gasps, grasping your hand, squeezing it hard. The others need you. You have to go with them. You have to survive. Promise me. I promise, but I love you, Faith. I'm sorry for not telling you the truth sooner, for not doing more. I love you too, Patricia, please. You jump as a hideous roar seems to shake the whole cabin. You hear something huge crash through the front door and start circling, seeking. The trap door shudders as something slams into it. Beats of dirt and wood trickle down the stairs, wheezing. Patricia turns to look at the others. Eric, take her. What? No! Come on, Faith. We're leaving. Grabs hold of your arm, pulling you away from Patricia. I have one question. What happened to the old guy we saved from Chapter 1? Just, just curious. Like, we haven't seen him at all, and he was part of the group, and he's, like, disappeared. I have to leave her. You manage to back up a few inches, but it's like steel hooks are gripping your heart, and each step threatens to tear it from your body. No. Eli looks Patricia in the eyes, and an understanding seems to pass between them. Thank you. I'll look after Faith, I promise. Me too. I, I'm so sorry I couldn't do more. Patricia nods, Eli turns to wrap your other arm, and you struggle wildly as you're dragged away into the tunnel. No, oh, let go of me. We're not leaving her. We're not leaving my sister. Catch one last glimpse of Patricia, raising her pistol and shaking hands. 
locking eyes on the trap doors, it starts to splinter. All right, you bastards. Let's see what you got. He let out a wordless scream as Eli throws a labor, and the ceiling of the tunnel collapses behind you. Outside, you can still hear the sound of her sh gunshots, alternating with shrinks of falling zombies. You struggle against Eli and Dirk, vision blurred by tears. Please, we have to go back. We have to save her. We... Sharp scream. Patricia's scream. Nearly stops you all in your tracks. And then a final gunshot echoes into the night. Rule number three. No hesitation. Chapter two recap. Eli joined you as an ally. He stayed to help Shannon treat Patricia's wounds, and she felt comfortable opening up to you. The night vision goggles were added to your equipment. You fought your way through the zombie-filled cabin, retrieve a memento for Eli. He's grateful for your actions. Patricia sacrificed herself to cover your escape. Hmm. It's kind of sad. Um. That is. You guys ever watch me play Detroit Becomes Human? <clears throat> Um, yeah, that was one of the choices I made. Self-sacrifice. So, yeah. It, uh, is a thing that, uh... Yeah, anyway. I, I always choose to go with, and, uh... Patricia kind of reminds me of myself. But, uh, yeah. Anyway. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like and share the video. Share the channel. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. And, uh, yeah, make sure to hit the bell, too, to receive notifications of when I uh, upload content, which uh, there's quite a bit more content to come to this channel. And, again, if you ever want to support the channel, uh, you can hit the Join button, as well as there's a few links down in the description below for social media, our Discord, where you can come join and chat with us all, as well as a few links to support this channel, support your creator. Um, if you can't do that, that's fine. Just engage with the channel, engage getting it out there, um, because without viewers like you, uh, that do so pretty much uh, you know this channel is just me talking to the void of the internet so um, you know again every big creator had to have some engagement and they had to go from there and the more engagement you get and uh, the more supportive of a community you have basically uh, the wider your reaches and I would love to get this community as big as possible and that is literally and figuratively my only goal that literally is it Thanks for watching. Peace out.